I just want to really um, continue with the birthing. There's so many aspects of it. And, um, you know, we've been talking about it. The last uh, meeting we had, we went into depth in, in what the woman is birthing in this hour in the earth. The woman of uh, Romans, woman, um, not Romans, of Revelations 12, and also the same aspect of it in Romans 8. Just there's a groaning on the earth and a birthing. And um, if you haven't heard Barbara Yoder's message, it's posted on the WAM page and on her page on Facebook too. So it's just <laughs> the spirit of the Lord came upon her in such a travail and such a groaning for the condition of the church, what is happening right now that we need to get ourselves in order in, for the days ahead of us. And oh, welcome, Juanita. I didn't see you there. <laughs> so um so we we are in a serious time and i believe i've shared so much about the significance of the time and the significance of women in this time that it's been only in this last century that we see you know a steady release of women coming into their fullness of who they are supposed to be and I believe God has reserved women as a secret weapon for this hour and um, pulling them out, calling us out, empowering us to do what we're called to do, to be who we are called to be. And um, I believe we're going to see more of that, more and more of that, more release. Uh, in 2022, I believe that the level of the anointing is just going to jump to a whole new um of what we have ever experienced, we are going to move into a new, a new place in our, in our walk with God, in our position, in our anointing, in every aspect of our ministry, in whatever ministry we're in, whether we're teacher, apostle, prophet, you know, pastor, um, intercessor, we're moving into a deeper understanding of everything right now because the revelation, God is peeling back the revelation for this hour because it's so critical and so needed. He's going to equip us with every tool that we need. He's not going to leave us, you know, stranded and saying, well, there you go, you know, deal with it. No, he is going to fully equip us to become the sons of God that we are called to be for this hour. And so we don't need to be afraid. We need to be the ones who um, he's called to strengthen the weak hands and the feeble knees, and to say to those who are fearful hearted, your God will come to save you. We are those ones. We are not the fearful hearted. <laughs> we are called to be the, the ones with strength. We have to be like David, you know, Mary has preached on this message so many times, you know, <laughs> how, uh, when they, he was devastated when, you know, his whole camp was completely wiped out. They took all the wives, children, everything. He was left with nothing and then his men wanted to kill him because of it and of course he what did he do he strengthened himself in the lord he strengthened himself in the lord and what a message that is for us right now because wow we need to strengthen ourselves in the lord um and you know i'm not speaking to baby christians here i'm speaking to powerful leaders and women of god that have have a history with god and you know how to do that and you have to remember that you know we are here for each other yes but we have to learn when when the when the the boat starts to shake and everything starts to rock we know where to go to strengthen ourselves in the lord and to find that place in him and to find that place where we hear his voice as david did and he said okay go and pursue and recover and david did and uh, all was recovered so we don't have to fear you know i tell myself that every day and at this moment and mostly 99 percent, i'm not afraid no matter what i hear i can't say that i can you know when i'm faced with certain situations that you know i won't make maybe shake a bit or be fearful, but I do know how to reach out to God and grab a hold of him. And he's the one we need in those times. So strengthen yourself in the Lord. So we are women called to this time to birth, to birth the purposes of God on the earth. 
And we have some big and huge, mighty things that he's calling us to birth, uh, to partner with him. And I'm not saying it's just women. Of course, men are birthing too, even though they don't know they are, but they are in groaning and travailing too. But um, they, um, they're learning how to travail. But, you know, women, if you go to meetings, prayer meetings, intercession meetings, it's predominantly women. They show up to pray, to travail. They are there. And um, so that's because there's a call in them. It's not uh, anything that we can, you know, put men down for. Women are called to birth and to travail and to intercede and to partner with God and to pray for the men that they will stand in their position that God has called them to and uh, lead with strength and with courage. Boy, what a, a time that we need courage for leaders, all leaders, men and women in in all the fivefold, we need courage. That's why when uh, Joshua was about to, to take the land, God spoke to him and said, I think it was seven or more times, be strong and courageous. So that is what God is saying to you tonight. Every one of you, be strong, be courageous, strengthen yourself in the Lord, get ready for what is ahead and get ready to birth. So I want to begin by just, I want to read this very unusual scripture and go touch a bit about, about the, um, the birthing process. And then I want to talk a bit about the harvest. Um, Jeremiah 31, 22, it says, turn back, O virgin of Israel, turn back to these, your cities. How long will you gather about, O you backsliding daughter? For the Lord has created a new thing in the earth. A woman will encompass a man. Now, that's a very unusual ver verse, and he doesn't explain himself. But um, I was digging into the scripture. I felt God was highlight highlighting it to me. I've written about it in one of my books, I believe on women. The word encompass there is the Hebrew word kebab. And it means to surround and to be about on every side and to shelter. So the woman, he says, a woman will encompass a man. A woman will surround God's plans and, uh, and shelter it. So the picture you're, we're receiving is as of, I believe, of a womb, you know, surrounding and sheltering the, the incredible purposes of God for this hour and it says god is doing a new thing it's a new thing he's doing a woman shall have surround a man so i believe that new thing is the um the, the times of restoration and the new covenant um established in the earth that if you continue to read that chapter it talks about the new covenant and restoration into the fullness of what god intends for earth and mankind so I believe we are in the days of birthing and it may take, who knows, some years, but we're going to travail to birth in the, um, the restoration and the fullness of the new covenant of God. So that word encompass, when I was thinking about it, the, 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 one of the words that came to me was cor to cor corral. You know, like how you corral the horses. And um, so I looked up that word, which of course means to gather. And um, so to, it's to gather and into a circular e enclosure. So here again, we have that circular thing, that surrounding thing. So it's like a womb, I see it, comprised of women birthing the purposes of God. And um, I believe that's what we're going to do on January 8th, where some of us are going to meet. Um, we're only limited in a few that can do because of COVID restrictions. But um, I, we're going to have a day, you know, um, up at Teen Ranch. And um, I'm going to dedicate the whole afternoon to, I feel God said, to birthing. We're going to sit in a circle like a, an encircle and encompass the purposes of God and birth 
I felt he said, pray for Canada, birthing the will of God for Canada. And uh, I don't have an agenda. We're just going to show up and see that, ask the Lord to lead and to guide us and to take over and to take us to where he wants us to. And, you know, I mentioned that to someone and that we're going to pray the will of God for Canada. And she said, well, is everybody ready to pray that? <laughs> and um, I said, well, you know, we're going to show up and he's going to lead the meeting. But, you know, we have to pray the will of God. We don't pray our will. And um, we are strong women um, in the army of God. And we have to fall into line as he gives us direction and we obey, we follow God. Things may get tough. It may look kind of hairy for a while, but uh, he'll walk us through this. So we are, women are creating that womb. And in my last word that I wrote, I talked about, you know, I kept seeing this amniotic sac that was about to break. And I kept seeing the word sac as uh, in capital letters. And God gave me the acronym was um, Strategic Apostolic Command. That, that um, amniotic sac is going to break. Whoa! It's going to break. Whoa! And we're going to see things happening. We're going to see the purposes of God begin to move across the earth. And we are called as women to partner with him in that. We are to be God's partners and to hunker down and travail to bring forth the will of God. Now, I just want to bring to your attention one other word. Um, it says in the Bible that women were created to be a helpmate to men. And, and that word, it means also a counterpart of equal standing with men. And um, that word Mary Audrey teaches on it a lot is uh, easer. She's an easer. But it also comes from the root word azar. And that word, interestingly enough, also means to surround, to protect, and to help. So women were created to help, to surround, to shelter, to protect, and to help, to be that help. And I believe we do that in our prayers and in our support and um, for what God is doing and to bless the sons of God too. So we are birthing, we talked about last week, the, the man child of Revelations 12. That is the birthing and the coming forth of the sons of God in union with Christ to um, to fulfill his purposes. And um, we see that man child, God has shown me that man child in many different perspectives in the Bible, in Romans 8, as the earth groaning in travail to bring that forth. Also in um, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 10 to 12, as the perfect man. And um, it says, till we all come to the unity of the faith and to the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, that's the man-child, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that's the man-child, the coming forth, the emerging of the sons of God in full maturity on earth, that includes women, we're coming forth now, that we should no longer be children, tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men, in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love, what we may grow up into all things, into him who is the head, Christ. So we are growing up into the measure and to the stature of the fullness of Christ into the head. And in the head is the maturity. And we are coming to that place right now um, in the purposes of God, in his plan, that we have, we're growing up into the head now. We're in that headstone phase, uh, the final phase where he is perfecting and is going to bring forth his will. So that word perfect, the perfect man, he says, um, to, to a perfect man to the measure of the stature of Christ. The word perfect is teleos. 
and it means complete in growth, complete in growth. So we've been growing up to the head, but you are coming into that place of the perfect man, complete in growth, mental or moral character of full age, no longer a child, you're grown up now, of full age. And the word stature is helikia, and it means maturity in age. So I believe that I'm speaking to you all tonight as ones who have been growing up into that place of God perfecting us and coming into maturity, into maturity of age. I don't know about you, but it's taken me a long time. It's been 28 years and I've been growing and growing and and thinking I'm there and finding out I'm not and continuing. And um, even right now, I know God is about to release me, release us all, you know, and I, I do, and now I approach that with humility and I approach that with caution because I know I'm flesh. I'm grown up spiritually in Christ. So I have grown a lot, I've learned a lot, I understand a lot, but I know that I have flesh that's weak that and i have to be on guard against that because it can uh rise up anytime as we all know and um and act in foolish and immature ways so i have to be watchful of my flesh and guard it and and be quick and violent with any place of eruption of immaturity <laughs> just shut it down right away and tell it where to go that like, we have no place for it we have no time for it it's going to be our downfall in the days ahead if we are not closed, our gates are not closed up and um, we've not understood God's will and his plan for our lives. We need to understand the word of God. He's not playing around. He is not playing around and um, his word is true. His word is the plumb line and uh, he does not compromise you know, and he's allowed for a season, I believe, us to function in a place of incredible grace to learn. You know, we like children, we learn, we, we, we try it, we fall, we get back up, we go again, we learn, we walk, we fall again. So there's that incredible grace for that you would give a child as they grow and they learn to understand their parents' wishes. But there must come a day when we are grown to that maturity where, where we are released into, into who we are called to be and to function in that place and know how to command our flesh, know how to command our spirit, know how to command our soul and be in charge of this temple here. You know, and that's, that's something, you know, I'm coming into, I'm struggling, I'm on a fast. Wow, and you know, I'm eating in the evening, but I'm fasting all day, and wow, is God ever digging down to the bottom, to the dregs, <laughs> to get it out? And I'm just seeing myself displayed in all my flesh, every day something rising up. And at first I was discouraged, and I'm thinking, what is happening to me? You know, I thought I was beyond this, but I realized that it's, it's the fast. <laughs> It's God. He is cleaning out the dregs. And he's saying, come on now, come on now, get rid of this stuff. I recognize it, see it for what it is. And um, repent, repent, pray it through, root that thing out. Um, I can't root it out, which I tell him all the time. I'm ready for it to go. But I believe he's getting me positioned and getting us positioned as we, we uh, come before him into that place of humility. He's getting us positioned for a divine encounter where the roots are going to be pulled out. I don't know what that looks like. Sounds painful, but I believe it's coming because for where we've got to go, we can't carry this baggage of flesh with us where we're going in the future. It's got to go. It's just got to go. It's, it's distressing. Like, get out of here. So we um he's doing an incredible work right now and i don't know if you guys at last week i spoke about the fast if any of you got that book consumed by um dean brig i think and wow what a book what a powerful deep it's exactly what i needed right now he's 
just digging into that flesh and just stirring stirring me and stirring the pot but um so i'm doing a 40 day fast god told me to and you know what since i've decided to do that i've heard at least three or four times where people you know like um barry munch just said you know god told him to do a 40-day fast you know and um, this girl writes on elijah list i really like her jamie something she god she just put out a word fast 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 press 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 into god and i, I saw another person said god just told him to do a 40-day fast so there's quite a few so i believe it's a time of fasting not just for the sake of fasting for goodness sake um, it's a time to clean out the drags, get rid of it, because 2022, we are moving on to a new place. There's no turning back, no worrying about, you know, fences and the old junk that we used to get all twisted and turned about, you know, in our flesh before. None of that. We've got to become one. We've got, got to become together in this union into this cohesive union where we are so focused on god and on the the task at hand that we join hands with and just in that unity and that union of love for one another knowing that we are in this together and we're not going to make it without each other so we have to have those strong bonds there's no more place for offense you know somebody was really nasty to me today on the phone <laughs> at someone that I would never have thought would have been so, you know, short and just kind of rude. And I, my flesh wanted to get offended, but you know what? Maturity kicked in, hallelujah. <laughs> and I just said to myself, you know what? She's having a bad day. She sounds overwhelmed with the work that she's, what she's facing it's that's all that it is don't make it more than that just forgive her and you know i just started to pray for her and pray peace for her because she sounded really flustered and sort of angry and i didn't take offense and um i did what she asked me to do in obedience without quarreling and um she then sent me a nice email saying thank you and i, I just knew that you know the prayers were reaching her <laughs> But you know, the old faith and not that old, maybe even last year would have got myself in a huff and thinking, who does she think she is? Well, forget that, you know, just finished with you, done with that, moving on. But I didn't, maturity kicked in, hallelujah. Can we all say hallelujah, are we there? Maturity is kicking in, wow. This is exciting. I've been praying for this, praying for this flesh to die, that I would not see it anymore. Anyway, I just am off on a trail. I don't know where I am. <laughs> so, um, so we talked about the man child, but you know, again, in the last word I wrote, you know, I quoted the scripture from Psalms 2 9 spoken as a prophetic word to jesus by the father but jesus speaks that word to us in revelations um 2 26. so this is about jesus and but jesus is saying it to us and he says and he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end so he's talking to the overcomers those are the ones who have come into that maturity and have dealt with the flesh he who overcomes keeps my works until the end to him i will give power over the nations and he shall rule them with a rod of iron as i have received it from my father he's received it and he's giving it to us and i checked that word i felt god said to look it up it's rabdos and it means a baton of royalty a staff or an office of authority a scepter so when he says he shall rule them with a rod of iron it's he shall rule them with that rod of royalty of being 
seated with Christ in the heavenly places as a king, as a son of God, a rod of royalty, a scepter. He's giving it to us. So I, I, I believe we have been learning and trying to understand to find this place of authority and we've been testing it out and testing our voice and testing the scriptures and seeing a measure of a measure of fruit from it. But I, I feel that we're coming into a place to where we're going to fully get the download of this and that we will begin to really um, begin to move in it where we will speak at, with and hold that scepter, that rod of authority and to rule with God, rule the heavens. Daniel said the heavens do rule. Um, that scripture is, someone's asking, Revelations 2, 26 to 28. And it's, uh, it's actually quoted from Psalms 2, verse nine, 8 and 9, where the Father says to Jesus, I'm going to give you the nations as your inheritance. So that's a word to us too, that scripture. I'll give you the nations as your inheritance and you will rule with a rod with the royal baton, you will rule. So rulership, what does that look like? I don't know. But God is going to lead us in this. We don't have to struggle or to strive. He's going to be the one that rises up in us. He's going to be the one in the open our mouths. A word of authority is going to come out with such power that we're going to be shocked at what's coming out of our mouths. We're going to be shocked at the level of anointing that we're our body is physically feeling as it rises up in us and we speak and we partner with God in ruling over nations and changing history. I've had moments, just moments when I have felt that. And so I know it's possible where I felt the anointing so strong in, in my body. I felt like I had, um, like I was like um, Hulk Hogan or something. I felt like I had muscles. <laughs> I felt like I had these strong, big muscles when I have none, zero. And so I knew it was the anointing that was rising up in me. I felt this strength, this faith. And it has happened to me many times. I open my mouth and things start to come out and with such authority. So it's not something I have control of it comes when God is moving upon us in that anointing but I believe that anointing is going to be moving upon us in a greater measure more as we uh, step out in faith we'll see it functioning far more in the days ahead in our lives on the moment when it, you're when it's needed in the instance when it's required you know, it's just going to be there. It's going to show up and you're going to learn to know that God is faithful and you can rely on it. He will be there. That's another thing I've lost the fear of in my immaturity, the panic of speaking on stages or in front of people. I was just, it was a terrible thing for me, but I've learned to know the faithfulness of God that even if I don't have one single word to speak, I can stand on a stage and know that when I open my mouth, it's going to come. Just understanding, just revelation is going to come. I'm going to start speaking and sharing, and it's just going to flow. You know, um, so I trust him in that, and I've seen him do it many, many times. You know, in Ecuador, I, it happened to me a couple of times. I was so tired. I had no word. I was almost in terror and in tears, thinking, oh, my God, I'm going to get up in five minutes. I don't know what I'm going to say. In five minutes, God. I don't know what I'm going to preach. And just like a minute before I'm about to stand up, he downloads a scripture and I get the message. And I get up and I preach it and it's like, wow. So he's faithful. I'm just trying to tell you, don't fear, don't worry. Lose the fear. Lose the fear. Lose the fear. So... What are the things that we're going to birth? We're birthing in travail, the sons of God, for sure. You know, where all the church is travailing for that. The earth is travailing and groaning for that to come forth because the earth is in crisis right now and they need messengers of hope to come on the stage right now and point them in the right direction. 
So I believe that women, um, we're called to many things, but for, for sure we are called to intercession, spiritual warfare, and to birth with God, you know, in, in that, that setting. Now, outside of that setting, we are also called to be leaders and to reach the harvest. You know, I, I have the harvest. I've never been one that's really big on the harvest because I felt my call was to be in teaching and leading and raising up discipling, but not so much in evangelism, but I've, I'm getting such a sense and a weight of God's heart for the harvest right now. And I believe every single one of us, whether evangelist or not, you have a portion assigned to you of the harvest whether it's one here, one there, two here, three there, 10, 20, 100, you are assigned a portion of the harvest. The harvest right now is shaking. They're in despair. They're in terror. They're scared. You know, they've been shaken, but God is shaking them and getting them ready for us to bring them good news, the good news of hope. You know, as I said, that scripture in Isaiah 35, say to those who are fearful hearted, I love that scripture, say to them, because you are the messenger, your God will come. He knows what he's doing. He will come to save. So we're, um, so the harvest, so we are going to travail and to birth the harvest. And um, I believe that there's, a couple different harvests, you know, Bob Jones did speak about that. I believe the birthing of the sons of God is the first harvest. It's the apostolic leadership. And I don't mean necessarily apostles. I mean an apostolic army, an apostolic people being made ready and being birthed right now to go out and to birth to bring forth and gather in the harvest. And that, so the harvest in the fields that are white and ready is the second harvest. So I believe God has been preparing the first harvest and we are, we are it, we're part of that. It's, and it's all over the earth. People like us, women like us, women and men, ready, be made ready, you know, over years of training, refining, we are being brought forth now to um, birth, um, to bring forth and to partner with God and to be who we're called to be, the, the, our dreams that we thought were, maybe some may have, may have thought to give up on, I hope not, but the dreams and the visions you've had, the things that you have thought of, it's all for now, it's coming forth. You are created to, for this time, you're gonna be who God called you to be, you're gonna blossom into this amazing supernatural being in this next season. And that is the birthing of the sons of God. That is the first harvest. And we are about to um, cry out and pray for the global harvest of souls, of lost souls to come into the kingdom of God. That is on Jesus's heart. He loves, that's what he died for on the cross, you know, and um, he, he's been waiting for this moment. It says the harvest is the end of the age, but it's, there's going to be a, a monumental gathering of souls from all nations into the kingdom of God. You know, they are ripe and ready, and God is looking for harvesters. And I believe that he has given, he has for everyone so strategies to reach them. You know, whatever it may be, maybe like, you know, Carrie, she goes out with a team and into the, into the malls and wherever. It may be having a, a home group and inviting neighbors on your street who are just, you don't know who they are. They're inside their homes, locked up, terrified, you know, crying out and uh, needing a friend, needing to hear a, a word of encouragement and hope. And maybe you're the one called to bring it to them. So it all begins with the air warfare, the intercession, you know, and then we go, we take action and we do what we need to do. So I don't know what the church is going to look like. I don't know what's happening over this winter, but um, you know, too many words are coming that's saying that there is storms. It's gonna get stormy. 
going to get a little darker, but the light was, shall be greater in, the, in God's people. The light will be great. We will shine. We will stand. We will let the world see what Jesus really is and what he looks like and show them his love. So with that, I just want to just impress that upon you. You know, that song, please go and listen to it again and soak in it. Mary, did you know? That's you. Every single one of you is Mary. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would one day rule? Did you know that your baby boy was great? Did you know that what you have inside of you is so powerful that it can change a community, it can change a nation. It's that big. It's that big inside of you. He did it with one little teenage girl. You know, he's done it with people that we, we read about and we think of them in such magnified, magnificent ways like Moses and Joshua and Deborah and whatever. They're just people who had fears and struggles just exactly like us. They are no greater than us. The only thing that made them great was the God that was inside of them. And that same God is inside of you. If he looks upon you and puts his anointing on you to be president of the United States, you can be that. And you will be that. It's just what God has determined. And we can change this nation. We can't change the will of God. Some things are going to have to happen. And it's going to play out God's way and not ours, as, as we have found out two years into COVID. But we are going to be history makers. And we're going to come out of this thing on the side of victory. Because we've read the end of the book. It, we are victorious. So I'm going to shut up now. <laughs> and um, I, I wanted to ask just a couple of people to share because um, I want, and then, and then I want us to pray. And um, I'm going to ask different ones to pray just to, so that we would all leave here inspired and strategies beginning to birth in our spirits of who we are and what we are capable of doing right now. You know, and I don't care what condition you're in, what age you're in, what color you are, nothing, nothing should hinder you from God's plan for your life right now. So Carrie, can you unmute yourself? And I stumbled upon Carrie or she stumbled upon me, um, I think through something I wrote, not sure don't remember right now, but um, I could just sense that, that we were of one spirit and um, she's doing things. She is a woman of God on the move. I just want to ask her to share briefly what she's doing. Hi, everyone. Oh my gosh, what, what a pleasure this is. First of all, I just want to say thank you so much to Faith. Basically, I, I responded to one of your writings, I think a couple of years ago, because I was so moved. You write so... Um, powerfully but yet so poetically at the same time it's wow. such a pleasure to read um what you what you pen on paper uh so my name is carrie john i'm actually pastor carrie john now which still stuns me wow. uh, let me just give you a, a little a little um a little history but first of all thank you so much also for doing this 40-day fast i'm joining you in that it's my very first i got the book consumed yes dean briggs is amazing wow. um praying an hour i i encourage you guys to to increase if you pray in tongues do it i'm praying at least an hour uh, in tongues in the morning before I start my day. Don't always get to read the post, but I'm a few days behind, but it's fabulous. Um, how I got to be a pastor for 20 something years, I was a law enforcer. I live in Toronto on wow. Markham, Ontario. And uh, I was a law enforcer doing probation, working in the jails and all of that. And then in two, th I'm also a fitness person in 2010, my kids found me unconscious in my bed. And then I had emergency brain surgery in 2010 totally immobile all of 2000 and 
12, completely immobile, had a walker, couldn't function at all, very angry at the world, and very angry at God. I was a believer, but only a believer for about two and a half hours a week, meaning I would go to church, praise the Lord, leave. The rest of my week was me, not God. Anyways, I, I, I didn't want to turn back to God, but I had to because the doctors had no reason for my immobility all of 2012. I went to a healing service at the church I now work at, and I was totally and completely miraculously healed in that service. I went in there unable to walk and left walking. God is amazing. He told me to go to Bible school. I did. I retired from law enforcement and now I'm working as a pastor. I don't know how to pastor, so I'm very dependent on the Holy Spirit. But God is so good. God is so good. And I guess our, our ministry is called Rain, like like um reigning in life through Christ. Um it's um based on Romans 5:17 where Rain Youth Ministries and um, the biggest thing for me there is just teaching them who they are in Christ because if we don't know who we are in Christ we will never function and operate in our authority you know of who of what he's given us and so um, I'm just I, again I'm so um, I'm sold out to Holy Spirit because if you give me a hundred offenders I would know what to do because that's what I've learned, you know, but I don't know how to pastor. And so I, I in terms, I remember the day fear left. So fear is gone. Um, but I'm waiting for that, what you said earlier. What was it you said? That um, I stepped up on the stage and I didn't know what to say. God filled my mouth. Oh my gosh. I know that's coming. <laughs> yes. Um, but uh, yeah, oh my gosh. So yeah, he, um, you know, I, I, I'm in the word, like I said, I'm retired now. So I'm in the word a lot. And, and because I, I never read it before. Um, but I, I he, after he healed me, actually, so before he healed me, I got to know him. To, there's nothing like immobility. There's nothing like, um, you know, the best thing and I pray, oh, God, the best thing, the father, the best thing the Holy Spirit allowed to happen to me was all my strength was gone. Like I, 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 I'm a trainer, like, and I train hard, you know, like I lift a lot of heavy weights and I couldn't lift anything. I could do nothing. My, my strength was so gone for two months. I was bedridden. This is all of 2012. And, you know, it's, it's amazing because I've learned that my true strength is not my own, but it's from him now. And so I share that, I have that, that story written in English, in French and in Swahili. You know, I've been to Africa sharing my testimony of preaching the gospel with the minister that at, at, at my church. But guys, God, you guys know this. And I, I, it's such a pleasure. Actually, I have a Zoom meeting. We, our, minist our ministry, um, our service rather, is on Friday evenings in person. But on Thursday nights, we do a Zoom meeting of a discipleship group because um, discipleship is so important. You know, it's important that kids know who they are and the, the enemy is coming against young people, everybody so much, but the youth are so, oh my gosh, anxiety and fear and all of those things. So my biggest thing is again, to get them to know who they are. We went out on the streets two weeks ago and we, it was freezing cold and we were, it's an outdoor mall, Don Mills and Lawrence, and we were laying, we were praying for people and it was so incredible. You know, and um, someone else too last week brought some items from tarot card reading and all of that. And we prayed and bound them and burned them outside in our, in our um, s'mores bin. And, you know, so we're doing things of God. We're operating in Mark, let me not forget, Mark 16, <laughs> the Great Commission, go out, you know, preach the gospel because it is the power of God right lay your hands on the sick tell the demons to go in jesus name all of those things and i think if we're not doing that then we're not doing jesus said to do more than that right so that's the biggest thing for us at rain you know because and i'm teaching them what that word means it's to reign reign rule have authority in life through christ take it back take take a hold of your environment like what's going on around you you know, and preach and, and also trying to help them to understand the power and the importance of praying in tongues every day, every single day. So, yeah, God is good. <laughs> God is so good. And I'm so grateful for you. And this is awesome. So in, in, at nine o'clock, we have our Zoom meeting um, where yeah. the youth come together. And, you know, the enemy is so silly. 
and all that he's doing because our Zoom meeting started because of COVID and now it's just grown and it's, um, it's, it's amazing how our youth group has grown through COVID. Like it's grown so much and I'm so, um, I'm grateful, grateful. I talk a lot about the Holy Spirit because that's who I know. You know, it's who I know. We are in Rain. Rain Toronto is our link or our, I don't know the name, my daughter. I, <laughs> I'm a little older, so I don't know the, the proper wording for it. But I think it's, it's Rain Toronto. Anyways, that's where we are on Instagram and on YouTube. And uh, I'm, just, I'm just grateful to God. So grateful. So that's, that's what I have to say. God is good. <laughs> He's so good. Wow. He's so good. Yeah. That is so awesome, Carrie. You're just glowing and shining with uh, with God. I, it's all over you, my gosh. And uh, yeah, God is going to use you might. He is using you powerfully, but watch out what's to come because you've stepped out. And um, wow, the kids, the, the, the generation, um, the, I have such a burden for them. They're so lost. They're so afraid. They're so insecure and intimidated by life. And so I pray for a thousand of you going out there in Toronto and that God will just download everything that you need, you know, the, the anointing and the words and the finances, everything, and gather all those kids to you because um, you are just awesome. I could just see them loving you and just thinking of the you're the best. So God knew what he was doing 